Welcome back to the channel. Well, in my normal escapades, I always take all of you with me, and it just so happens that JC has a friend that is sitting next to me, the ultimate car fanatic in Vegas. His name is Dino, which is also the coolest name known to man. So I feel honored to be in his presence. Super great guy, and he has, as you all know, a huge collection of cars. Now, the deal with Dino is, is that he really likes Alfa Romeos. And to be honest with you, I don't really know a whole lot about them. But the cool thing is, is that he is an expert in this field. So let's let him tell us how it works. Dino, thanks for being on the channel, my friend. Hey, it's great to be here. And I was wondering, you know, how did you get involved in Alfa Romeos? What's the story behind that? Uh, that's real simple. My father was an Alfa Romeo mechanic. And actually, even in the late 60s, we had an Alfa Romeo dealership. Whoa. So my love for Alphas was, uh, you know, steeped at a very, very young age. Uh, you know, and what was great, too, is that in those days, in the 60s, uh, they were, he worked with many race car, race car drivers. The most famous of which, by the way, is Ken Miles. So he had, yeah, he had a shop with Ken Miles uh, for a couple years. It was actually depicted in the movie for a brief period uh, kind of interesting there was no mention of my father but anyways so that was that but after that he had his own business uh, and uh, basically Italian cars but mainly Alfa Romeos obviously he worked on Ferraris and Fiat's as well but he really focused on Alphas and he had a lot of guys who were racing Trans Am that were working with him uh, Vic Provenzano was one of them Charlie Tyriot and these guys were just a so much fun to be around as a kid and my dad was working all the time so the only way to hang out with him was to hang out with him at the shop so while I was there I'd sit there and uh, you know grind valves and do all kinds of work on Alpha so I just loved working with them I mean at a very young age I'm telling you I was five or six years old when I was doing all that so it's, it's easy to understand why I got into it you know yes. uh, and then from there what really got me into it though is this one guy that worked for him Charlie Tyriot he used to drive his, his SCCA Trans Am Alfa Romeo GTA to work. Okay, he had a couple of them. He was a trust funder, really funny guy, great guy. And uh, but so he had a couple of GTAs and one of them he, he'd drive to work. And every once in a while when my father was working late, uh, he would say, hey, Charlie, you drive my son home? And I'd go, yes. <laughs> so he would take me home and he was a kind of a prankster. So he would take me home on I don't know if a lot of your viewers know, but on Mulholland Drive. So Mulholland Drive from the very beginning, basically at Cahuenga in Hollywood, all the way to Sherman Oaks where we live. So that's, I don't know how many miles, let's just say it's 10 miles. But it was basically like a 10 mile road race, all the way home. And I'd be sitting there holding on for dear life and just going, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. Cause you know, eight, nine years old, you know, in a car just like this, by the way, this is a GTA Junior. He had a full race GTA. And uh, so it was just, I was stung. I was stung at an early age. So, always, so when I was a kid, all I ever wanted to do was be as cool as Charlie and drive around a GTA, you know? So uh, that was it. Well, dreams do come true. They do. Well, my friend, here's the deal. You've got a whole awesome collection of Alphas. So let's head back to his immaculate house and take a look at those. All right, let's go. Dino, what is this amazing car we're looking at here? Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about these Alphas. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This is a 1967 Julia Super. Um, we did a, uh, me and my team, we did a rotisserie restoration on this thing and then m did several modifications along the way. <clears throat> Principle among them is we put a, um, if you want to focus in here. So we put a, what's called a twin spark motor in this thing which is out of a 1992 Alfa Romeo 164. So this originally uh, is a front wheel drive motor, so it's a sidewinder. So we had to modify you know, the bell housing area, the water pump, the, we had to make a new, fabricate a new uh, oil pan. And uh, so we had to do a lot of work to convert this to, for the rear wheel drive application. Uh, we also put uh, throttle body fuel injection. However, if you look closely, and to those that know, these look like your basic Weber 40 millimeter DCOE carburetors, but they're actually made to look like Weber DCOEs, but they're, it's actually made by a company in England called Genvy. These are actually fuel injection throttle bodies. So you get the vintage look, 
and with the modern day performance. It's really, really cool. Every project starts out with a, with a, a goal. So I wanted this to be kind of the, <clears throat> um, the equivalent of what an M3 is to, let's say, a 3 Series Beamer. So not, you know, red hot racing, you know, uh, uh, super mod. It, it's actually just everything's elevated. So it went from a 1600, because the original motor is a 1600, to the 2 liter. I dropped it down a little bit, lowered the suspension, um, put adjustable control arms, uh, Kony shocks, uh, bigger sway bars, slightly wider wheels, but period correct. Um, Pirelli CN36 tires, CN36 tires, which are uh, designed in the 70s, but still work really well today. It took about a year, and pretty much as we go through all the cars, it, it, it more or less takes about a year. When you, when you talk about tearing something apart, you know, cataloging all the different components, identifying what needs to be rebuilt, replaced, rechromed, repainted, etc. Then you order the parts. Of course, all the parts have to come from Europe anymore. There's really no good U.S. suppliers. So here what we've got is a 1967 Alfa, Alfa Romeo GTV. So Giulia Sprint uh, uh, GTV Veloce, which is, means fast in Italian. And uh, this is also another Restomod. In fact, I was heavily into Alphas as a kid. I, I got busy in the working world and sold off all my Alphas. And then this is the car that got me back into them again back in 2010. So uh, you can see several Alphas in here, but this is the first one that started it off. Funny thing though with this, um, you know, as a kid I had one. I had one of these when I was 15 years old. This is my very first car. Not this one, but one just like it. And you know, when I was a kid, I couldn't really afford to do anything to it. You know, I had all these dreams to be able to uh, do anything I wanted, but I could never afford it. So it was fun to go back after, you know, I built up and sold some businesses and things like that and said, oh, okay, so I'm going to get me an alpha and I'm going to do everything that you could ever imagine doing to it. And that was my dream. So it was undrivable. It was basically a race car on the street. So it was, it was, it wasn't fun to drive. I mean, it was like I was drunk with being able to buy everything. And, and I realized after I put it all together, like I probably should have plan this out a little bit better. Originally a 1600cc motor, and what I did is I put a, a twin spark, uh, a, but this one, unlike my other car, isn't out of a rear wheel drive, this is out of a, I mean, not of a, it's not out of a front wheel drive, it's out of a rear wheel drive. It, it is carbureted, uh, but it's highly modified. It's got about 225 horsepower, um, and it really goes. I mean, this is a really crisp machine. At the 225, what did it have originally? Yeah. Oh, about 105, 110. So you had twice as much power. We've uh, got carbon fiber, you know, hood and deck lid, uh, aluminum doors. I mean, I look at these works of art, and I will say one thing, that if you're going to do the project, always have a good plan and yes. try and do it only once. Yes. I always try that because I don't have the resources like Dino has that can like keep redoing it. So if I don't do it right the first time, I just have a project that I hate. So this here is uh, a 1960 Giulietta Spider, very much a resto mod. So it started out life as a 1300. It's got a two liter engine in it. You know, it's something that, you know, so you got a lot of power and torque that they never dreamed of having. Um, lowered, stiffer bushings, adjustable suspension. We did some very trick stuff where we fabricated our own upper control arms because these cars was pretty much set it and forget it. The, the, the caster and camber wasn't adjustable, so we made special arms where you can adjust them, uh, which works well with these modern tires. These are CN36 tires. Um, so the thing handles like they never dreamed possible. Again, this is a complete rotisserie restoration. Uh, no expense spared, every detail looked into, uh, and it goes and drives, you know, is, I mean, it's not a modern car, but it, it almost feels like one. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but for some reason, I keep getting hung up on the whole no expense spare. That's, <laughs> you're a real man when you can just, every project, go at it like that. But God, just living the dream here, it's just incredible. It's probably got about 100 and, actually I know, to the wheels, it's got about 165 to the wheels. I converted the four-wheel drum brakes to four-wheel disc brakes. That's a wise move. I was about to ask you, have you done anything to address the stopping power since all these things have so much more power? Well, okay, so this here is a 1973 GTA Junior. Now, um, 
uh, earlier I showed you a GTV, it was a 67. Um, these cars are interesting because Alpha produced the GTAs, A meaning Alegerita, which means lightened, okay? They produced these and they homologated these only for racing. The beauty is they made the car, it looks identical to the steel body version, but it's about, I'd say about 300 pounds lighter. So it's got a lot of magnesium components, for example, the bell housing uh, is magnesium where they, they, you know, are aluminum on the other ones, magnesium uh, center uh, section for the differential, um, just all these little tidbits. When you start looking and, and you start to notice all the details they went through, even the window regulators deep inside the door, steel on the other ones, aluminum here. I mean, that's a lot of work they had to go to to make this thing lighter. Um, so these are very rare. Uh, and as a result, they can, they can be pretty pricey. What I like about this is this, this is what's called a stradale, okay? So, because, which means road going, all right? And, and it was kept intact as a stradale because most of these were ordered and bought and immediately converted to race cars. Wow. So it's very rare to see them in this condition, which is in road going, streetable condition. So, that's why when I bought it, I didn't want to go too crazy resto modding it, even though I have a hard time not screwing with anything. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Man. Yeah. Do you, you guys see anything that he, I don't know, it doesn't seem like he does anything, right? <laughs> For the engine, now the engine is, um, it's a very special engine. It's a twin plug engine, which they made, it's unique to the GTAs, but it's a 1300. So honestly, you know, it, it couldn't get out of its own way. I mean, they were beautiful motors. And in, unlike the 1300s that came in all the other alphas, they changed the bore and stroke ratio. So they went from a 74 by 74 to uh, a 78 by 67 and a half. So to get, you know, it's a, it's a real rever. I mean, it goes to like 9,000 RPM, but it just has no torque. So what I did is I pulled the original engine out intact as it is, and I, I kept that. And what I did is I put uh, a vintage looking, now there's people actually mm -hmm. making aftermarket cylinder heads, okay? But what, I, what it is, it's a, a vintage GTAM uh, of, this, of this era, so I'd say of like the 71, 72 era cylinder head, which is a narrow, narrow angle valve, so you got, it's, it's much more efficient um, and uh, of course producing much more power. So this thing produces about 190 horsepower and again, not, it's not full race or anything because I wanted to be able to drive it on the street. Although I have taken this thing to the track and had a marvelous time with it. Man, well, it looks incredible. I mean, the going trend we're hearing, seeing with all of the cars is just top notch. But, you know, Dino, you bring up a real good point that, you know, a lot of people, as you've probably seen, they kind of lose focus on their projects, whether it be just endless amounts of power. We see it all the time. But balance. Balance. Is, balance is something you hear me bring up and that's something this man pays close attention to because the driving experience really hinges on balance. It doesn't matter if you have all the power in the world because if it doesn't work efficiently with the chassis and everything in the entire setup, the whole driving experience isn't really what it's supposed to be. But what Dino's done here, which is amazing, is he just increased what he wanted the aspect, but tried to leave everything so the experience is intact. So it's really cool. Well, this is a GTV, but it's not really a GTV. It's actually a silhouette of a GTV. In fact, the only thing off a, a GTV is the, the metal roof. Everything beneath it is a 100% tube frame construction. Um, it's a race car that we built. Actually, my good friend Steve Ruiz, whose son Andrew works for me now, um, he built the car, designed and built the car, uh, and it took about a year and a half, two years uh, to build. I mean, it wasn't a full-time project, but it was something we did after work. It looks pretty unfinished right now, but it's actually, we've been restoring it painstakingly and making sure all the parts fit. So it's at, actually at the point where all the parts can come off, and we're gonna go ahead and powder coat the frame and just assemble it, and it really is very close to being a running car. The motor, put out about 255 horsepower. So it's pretty good for an Alpha 2 liter. What engine management did you go with? Uh, I believe this one has, a, now it's got AEM. Before it had something else, but oh, uh, cool. you now we've, we've gone to pretty much AEM engine management on, on all our cars. Very so cool. this is a 74 GTV. Uh, it was basically just a kind of a rust bucket street car I found on uh, eBay. 
Wow. And the guy was local, and so you know he and his girlfriend came down to drop it off, and he was all worried that once I saw it, I was going to grind him down. I said, "No, nah, I told you I'd pay you. I forgot what I paid him. It wasn't much." So I, I gave him the money, and he was on his way. And I said, "Look, I'm turning it into a race car anyway, so don't worry about it." He felt bad. There was a lot of work. We had to cut out a lot of rust, you know, uh, which we did. Actually, that part we did ourselves. This is the car that uh, Andrew, who works with me, it was basically his. Um, his first project where he took on the whole, the whole project. So, uh, I did the mechanical stuff, the motor, and actually the trans, I didn't even do the trans because we put a sequential six-speed trans in there. Not really vintage correct, mm -hmm. but I really liked the, the, you know, I really wanted it, so that's really what, what I wanted to do. So we put that in there, and you know, of course I did all the assembly, but, um, well, and he helped too. We just put electrical assist power steering in there to make it even, you know, more modern. I mean, it's just, it, it's so sweet to drive. So pretty much an, an uncompromised tub version as opposed to the tube version. So this here is a 1965 Julia Spider Veloce. And this is my most recent restoration project, again, ground up, rotisserie restoration. Um, this is where I really am starting to learn about restraint, okay? Because this was, other than a few things, I really kept it more or less stock. And again, I did put a little bit slightly hotter cams. I did put compression, higher compression pistons, but... You know, that list seems to be growing, my It friend. is. I thought, I thought so, originally we were stuck on the, yes, it's purely correct, but I keep hearing the list growing here. What's going on? <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> You know, it's still probably only got about 120 horsepower or something like that. So not a real screamer, but super smooth, quiet. You know, mm -hmm. got the stock intake. Hey, I got the stock intake. Hey, all, all right. right. Well, then all is good. <laughs> okay. All is so good. we don't have that big, yeah. you know, dual Weber Understood. drone or whatever. So it's uh, it uh, it's quiet and smooth. Yeah, look at that. That's a stock oh intake God. system. Okay. If you we wouldn't find... have seen this because the other cars, we would have never known. <laughs> exactly. This is the only one that's got it on all my Alphas. Um, pretty proud of that, that the engine bay is fairly, fairly original. There's some, purists will find some differences and that's okay, uh, but uh, we, uh, I'm pretty proud of it. It's, well, it's it looks well, phenomenal it's as well with together. all your projects. I just want to be real quick and point something out. I don't really find a lot in common with the Alphas. I appreciate everything about them, but I am pretty excited because this little sign right here, Veloce. My Aventador is a Super Veloce. I feel like I have bridged the gap between Dino and I. Look. Yep. And there it is. I knew there'd be a connection somewhere here with, between us. Man, Dino, thank you so much for showing us your awesome Alphas at the house. That was just a Incredible. As I hang on for dear life here and I'm very, very hot because the only thing the downside of this car is it doesn't have any AC and all of you know that I don't do real well in heat. But here's the deal. I'm fairly sure that I might not live through this. And as you can see, it's just a blast. Dino is a man that knows how to have fun, which is what I really love. And this is kind of what I was hoping for for today. But you know, my friend, out of all of this, what I really have to do is ask you, which one is your favorite? This car is, the, is probably my favorite. It's, it's probably truest to its original form. I mean, it is modified. I do have a pretty hot motor in it but it's, uh, it's truest to its original form. <laughs> good time and I will say this that was just a blast <laughs> brother thank you so much it was such a good time your alphas are amazing well my friends I'm gonna go out with Dino again and see what other trouble we can get into I hope all you had a great weekend hey,